Well, Commoner got a new, very fast wizard, but how fast is Asilio, our new elemental lightning wizard in Commoner? It's a very interesting list, and unfortunately, I'm not sure if it's going to hit the mark, but let's go ahead and take a look at what deck I built for Asilio and kind of see the overall strategy of this new robotic wizard. Hey there, Ashwings. Welcome on in to another wonderful commoner deck tech, this time for our new friend, Asilio. Asilio is a new elemental wizard that has come out in Rosetta and is the last of the four heroes of Rosetta that I have to cover for commoner. So very, very interesting hero choices so far. Um, I've enjoyed a lot of the stuff here that's come out of uh, Rosetta specifically for uh, these classes and these talents, and there's plenty of other heroes that this set affects, but I kind of wanted to just talk about the new heroes and how I personally view them and give you an idea about how you can build them for yourselves. So let's talk a little bit about Asilio and what they do. So Asilio's ability is once per turn instant, you can discard an instant to draw a card. They also have the Essence of Lightning, which means they can use Lightning cards. They have 18 health, so less than 20, which is a little unfortunate, but that's I think that's Icelander health, so not too terrible there, and still an Intellect of 4. So the concept here really, though, is not just for Asilio's ability. While Asilio's ability is really, really awesome, you don't really get to utilize it as much as you'd think. Uh, in most cases, at least in commoner, it's a great way to filter out instants from your hand that maybe you want to have a card that blocks instead. Uh, it would be really important to discard that in instant and then draw a new card with a block value. Uh, but the deck kind of plays a little bit more like aggro than anything else. So it's more difficult to make something like that happen. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the, uh, the equipment suite here. First, we have Iron Rot Helm. This just blocks one. I would like to theoretically play um, Flash of Brilliance, which you can play Flash of Brilliance also, uh, but you don't really get a lot of the sigil effect from it. Uh, the thing with Flash of Brilliance is that when you block with it, you can discard a lightning card and then bounce a aura back to your hand. And you don't really get to do that a whole lot in here uh, so theoretically if you had the opportunity to you could certainly do that so you could run flash of brilliance instead but i just run iron rot helm here it's the same card in, in its effectiveness except flash of brilliance is just prettier blossom of spring this is just to get a quick action point should you need it because sometimes you're going to need these action points and it's going to be important for you to go ahead and pop a blossom of spring here uh, then we have Mark of Lightning for our arms. This is just to kind of get an additional point of damage through. Uh, this was brought up in a prior video um, for Aurora. Uh, I was I was informed that this card, Second Strike, does not work the same way with Mark of Lightning that I thought, but it's still effective because if you play Mark of Lightning and you, you start with Fry, you know, you attack with Fry, your opponent blocks for three, you can go ahead and destroy Mark of Lightning and then you can get the second strike effect of four and go again. Uh, this is on attack and this is going to be uh, in the defense step. So it doesn't get the additional plus one go again if you use it while you are attacking with second strike. But it's still a great way to go about doing it. You're still attacking with lightning cards at some point. So it's important. Then we go ahead and we take a look at the boots. We are running Mage Master's boots. This is just so we can play two actions in the matter of our turn. Uh, two wizard spells in most cases if we're trying to really push the damage of that arcane uh, and then just kind of going from there you could theoretically maybe even do something like snapdragon scalers but i think mage master's boots tends to work out a little bit better uh, because you do have uh, more resource heavy stuff in the deck here then for our weapon we're actually playing waning moon now i'm 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 on and off about waning moon I wanted to play Volzar because I think Volzar is really cool. 
The concept here, though, is that if I want to play any of if I'm stuck with all wizard actions in my hand, I can play a wizard action and then pitch to waning moon. And that's at least fine, right? If my turn is wizard action, wizard action, waning moon, then I'm cool with that exchange. And that's still a very, very powerful turn. Those are, you know, near Icelander turns. But in this case, I just kind of want an additional two arcane damage to throw at my opponent because arcane is it's just harder to block. In most cases, you know, your opponent will have to pitch an entire card or two, maybe, to uh, to block out this two arcane damage. So it is important to note that that is the case there. Um, but I'm still playing around with Volzar, trying to get Volzar to work. The only thing with Volzar is that you have to play pretty, like, almost blue heavy, and you need to have a lot of lightning cards to have go again. So playing things like Bry, Lightning Surge, um, You've got Lightning Flow, a bunch of the cards that you'll find in Aurora. You can play in Asilio, but then you have to also have a Wizard card. So you need to have somewhere between like a two to one for Lightning cards to Wizard cards, and then hope they all line up correctly in your hand, which I feel is just far too situational for something like Commoner to be able to pull off. So Waning Moon is just kind of the best backup we have here for it. But let's go ahead and get into the deck, kind of show off some stuff here. So we're going to first show that Aether Quickening, downshifted from rare into common, is going to be in the deck here. I like Aether Quickening, um, strictly because if you're able to even amp it one additional, then it gets to come in for five. And then if it hits for five, it gets go again. You could amp this even further with cards like Exploding Aether. Uh, that's just one blue to play Exploding Aether and then Aether Quickening. And then you could play another attack or some, or even uh, you know, you're probably gonna want to play another attack at that rate. But Aether Quickening, very powerful, especially if it's amped right, but it's still just uh it's a fun breakpoint because most heroes aren't running AB4, they're running AB3. And so even if you're able to leak a little bit from this, it's pretty good. We are running all three colors of the arcane twining. The reason we are doing this is because we can amp things. So if we're coming in with some arcane damage or planning to come in with some arcane damage, we can always go ahead and discard this card to amp our next card's damage, giving a little bit of a buff and then making it harder for our opponent to block that out. So these are great. They also block for three. Very, very valuable. Then we have Electrify. I'm playing Electrify because I want kind of these more go wide turns here. I do feel like with Electrify, I should be playing Volzar because if I play it from Arsenal, I get to draw a card and that might be more lightning cards and it might give me more value there. But overall, Electrify is just kind of a boom grenade, right? You get to play Electrify and then you get to go. If any of my attack actions hit, you get hit for another three. And in most cases, that just forces your opponent to block really well, which is good for you because it gives you another turn to play things. Exploding Aether, we're only running the reds. Amp three for two is really, really good, especially again in that kind of AB3 format. So if you're coming in with something that has six or seven arcane damage on it and your opponent can only block three, that's still four damage that they cannot prevent. And it's pretty good. We have Fry's here. Fry, it's a zero block card, but it's a zero for three go again. Again, this is really, really good just to kind of extend those chains and provide a little bit of damage before um, coming in with any arcane. Same goes with Lightning Surge as a zero for four. You're usually going to want to park this in the arsenal and swing with it at some point here for go again and then come in with a, you know, arcane damage spell and then a waning moon. So not too bad of a deal there. Uh, as for some more arcane here, we are running Overflow the Aether Well. This is another surge target. Uh, if you go ahead and you amp three into this, this will be a zero for six uh, damage arcane spell. And if they only AB two of that, then you get two resources on top of it, which you can utilize for some other cards that we can play at almost technically instant speed. So next, we're going to move into Perennial Aether Bloom. This gives us a little bit of a overall uh, fatigue plan. Uh, you don't really you're not really amping these a lot, but it is again, it's a zero block three deal three arcane damage. But if it happens to deal four or more, then it gets to be put on the bottom of its owner's deck. So you can go ahead and utilize that to be able to give yourself a little bit more 
power along the entirety of the game to, to really close things out there. Reverberate is a card that is going to be really, really effective in just making sure that you get to play other wizard actions because you can amp this, right? You can use that amp to, to bring this up to six, right? And then Reverberate will come in for six damage. And if it deals damage, that way I can banish a wizard non-attack action card from my hand with costs less than or equal to the damage dealt by Reverberate. And if you do, you may play it this turn as though it were an instant. So in this case, you can choose another one of these one cost spells in your hand or a zero cost spell, and you can play it at instant speed to go ahead and follow up that Reverberate. Pretty powerful turn, but that's just good wizard stuff right there. Scalding Rain. It's a very simple one for four arcane damage. It's just Aether Quickening, but without the possible go again, and it blocks three. Second Strike, you're gonna follow these up on turns that you've dealt damage. Uh, so if you've played Fry and they didn't block, or you played Lightning Surge and they only blocked three and you dealt one damage, you can come in with a second strike that comes in for four go again, and then you can swing in with something like a really, really big, powerful uh, arcane damage spell here. Now, Something that I've added in here, and I'm not sure if I'm in love with it. This is just, again, a test because you got to get a little creative when it comes to um, when it comes to the overall game plan of Asilio is Wounded Bull and uh, Yellow Finals Fighting Spirit. And the reason I've added these in is because we already start with less life than most heroes do. And we're in most cases not going to be blocking very well. So if we can at any point throw a Wounded Bull or a Findle's Fighting Spirit at our opponent, we can gain a life here or come in for eight. And that's a lot of damage that our opponent is not going to want to take. Uh, this threatens a lot, whereas, you know, coming in with a bunch of measly zero threes, fours, and maybe three arcane, like three arcane damage is really easy to block. So it's... It, this is kind of a way for you to go like, okay, cool. Well, I'm coming in for big physical now. You have to worry about that then. Then next we do have the photon splicing. This is just the blue. It blocks three and then you can discard it to amp. You're not really going to probably be actually playing this card anytime, but discarding it to amp is good. We also have sigil of lightning. This is very good in case your cards don't have go again. Uh, but the embodiment of lightning does only give attack action cards go again. So be aware if your hand looks like a second strike and then uh, overflow the aether well, you cannot play overflow the aether well to give it go again and then come in with a second strike and get that bonus. If you dealt damage, you're going to want to attack with second strike first, and then you're going to want to come in with things like overflow the aether well. And then finally, just some more defensive power here. We have Triple Light Fantastic, a one for three block two, but also discard to prevent two. So that's going to be really good in case, um, you know, you're trying to block out a little bit there. That helps with Kadachis or it helps with any of the other more um, arcane based damage dealing there. And then moving into the sideboard, we do have Arcane Polarity. This is good into those Runeblade matchups. Uh, you know, if you take one arcane damage and then heal four, that's a pretty good feels good moment. Um, but you can also play this into wizards. In most cases, though, you're going to want to make sure that if they hit you with something like a Voltic Bolt or, you know, something that just does damage and doesn't have an on hit that you can respond by playing arcane polarity. But in situations, if your opponent is coming in and they're attacking you with a an Aether Flare, you're going to want to use arcane barrier to block out that aether flare because that is a very powerful card if it does hit and we can also use oasis respite for that too it's always been a tried and true card against wizards you know if they're coming with a card that's going to buff up all their other attacks you just pay one resource come in with oasis done and over with and then finally we have our null rune hood our robe and our gloves for our ab3 package for the wizard matchups or you can even just run one of these if you're going into Rune Blades, for instance, um, if you're going into Rune Blades, I'd probably just get rid of Mark of Lightning and put in that Null Rune Gloves and just make sure that you're able to block out those Rune Chants effectively while also bringing in this Arcane Polarity. So that is essentially the concept of the deck. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get into a quick game. I'm going to show you guys kind of how it plays out and see what lines we're looking for as the, the game progresses. 
All right, so our opponent here is none other than Chain. We have seen a lot of Chain gameplay over these past uh, couple of weeks here, but Chain got a lot of really good things, so totally understandable why that came out to be. I go ahead and I switch in that Null Rune Gloves, and then I go ahead and put in these Arcane Polarities. I'm curious which I want to take out. I end up just swapping out some Aether Quickenings here because I have a feeling I'm going to be doing a lot more blocking than anything else. So I want to make sure that uh, I have those those readily available. Now, I could have swapped out some of the no blocks like a fry. Uh, that probably would have helped my further game plan because you can fatigue chain. But you'll see here, this is a shrill skull form for seven on turn one. Very, very powerful here. And unfortunately, that arcane polarity means that I just can't block. So I go ahead and just use utilize the opportunity to gain life here from Findel's Fighting Spirit. So now I'm at a whopping 19. Super, super good block there overall. But then they go ahead and play that Deadwood Dirge. Now Deadwood Dirge into Chain, very good because you get to destroy that Shackle to create Rune Chance instead. So what I do here is I just take the Rune Chant damage and then I take the Arcane damage from Rosetta Thorn and then I just take the rest of it. But I'm going to Arcane Polarity here. I gain four life. So we're effective. We effectively lost one life for my whole hand, which is pretty good. They used a Deadwood and a Shrill. So the only thing is here is that Chain now has no Shackles, which means they won't have such wide Chain Links, but they're still going to have very powerful turns. So we went ahead and we discarded to Amp so we could play Reverberate. Reverberate did hit because Chain doesn't like to block. And now we're just going to be able to play Perennial Aether Bloom for free. So we go ahead and play out Perennial Aether Bloom. That's three additional damage here. No Surge, so nothing really to do there. And they go ahead and they play their Arcane Polarity, which then deals, you know, gains them back all that life that I pretty much just dealt to them. So we're in a bit of a, an interesting stalemate here, uh, but as time goes on, that Rosetta Thorn is certainly going to pose a problem because I do only have Arcane Barrier 1 instead of Arcane Barrier 2. So Rosetta Thorn is certainly a great way to leak a couple points of damage. But there is a Soul Shackle for the go again on their next Shadow or Rune Blade attack. And that, that Bounding Demigon is going to come in for just three. Now, most of my stuff does block for three, so that is very nice. A lot of times what I am thinking about doing is playing is just like blocking effectively. But these Deadwood Dirges here make it so it's really difficult to do that because they effectively don't get to banish any cards from their deck, which means that it's more difficult to fatigue them. And then they also get a bunch of arcane damage. And I, I really, you know, I just have to pitch to that and hope for the best here. So once they're out of Deadwood Dirges and they have to rely on those, um, they have to rely on those, uh, you know, Shoal Shackle banish cards, that's one thing. But again, that whole turn, they essentially dealt one damage to me and I blocked it out as effectively as I could. But every single turn, it just gets harder and harder for me to block ever out everything. And my opponent just kind of can come in with a bunch of damage. So I'm not really much on the bat on the front foot here. I'm more so just trying to wait and see if they're going to overextend and then I get to go ahead and just take full advantage of that. But here they come in for six go again with that hit the high notes. Incredibly powerful combo with that soul shackle. So hit the high notes comes in zero one for six go again. I simply just block for three here. I'm going to try and keep some cards in my hand so I can throw them at my opponent because again, they might not want to block. And so if they don't block, what I can theoretically do on this turn is play Fry, then play Twinning, and then pitch to, want, pitch to Waning Moon. So what I do here is that instead. I just block it. I don't block this Vanta Banshee. And I just keep going. Now, theoretically, I should have at least blocked six of that Vanta Banshee. And even if I just arsenaled this Fry, it would have felt good. But we're trying to, to put on some pressure on our opponent, but they're at 17 life they can afford to take a little bit more damage um, in order to kind of better themselves there. So we go ahead and we swing in with this Arcane Twining. Arcane Twining is going to deal three. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pitch to Waning Moon for two more. 
and that's going to come through. So I dealt five damage to them in that realm, but they arcane polarity. So they gained it all back. Arcane polarity is a hell of a card in commoner. Let me tell you, being able to gain four life against arcane heroes is something else. So there's that shrill turn again. Again, they've got two shackles now, so they're going to want to use a shackle every turn. So in our case, we definitely want to make sure that we can try to prevent as much of this as possible. I, I don't know that I love taking damage here, though. Um, I feel like we have to really we have to really put on the pressure for a lot of this. They're going to take three here and then four more for here. But again, they're, they have such a life lead. That there's not really much I can do in these regards. They get a red Vantum Banshee to banish. So if they have a Deadwood Dirge in hand, a red Deadwood to destroy a Soul Shackle, it's good for them. Playing Cussing is awesome here <laughs> for them because I really, really cannot do much in regards to this overall game plan. Um, if they attack and they swing at me with something with a big break point, I really can't do much there. So they do that. They swing in for five. I block for five because I don't want that arcane cussing to come off. But as we all know, that Rosetta Thorn can come in and do a lot. But here is a hit the high notes. Unfortunately, I can only block three here. Uh, if I had kept my my helmet, then it would have been significantly more in my favor. But unfortunately, I can only block three. They're going to give it go again because it's a one cost attack. So it's going to hit that arcane cussing is going to go off and it's going to give them three rune chants in which they're then going to be able to play Vantum Banshee for three rune chants and seven damage. I only have an arcane polarity in hand, so I go ahead and play it so I can gain myself some life. They come in for seven. And I can't do anything, so I just die. And that is really a more of a showcase of how powerful Chain is becoming inside the commoner format. But uh, at least we kind of got an idea about what you'd like to do for Asilio. A lot of it is attack action, non-attack action, waning moon. Uh, that's probably some of the more powerful combos you can get pulled off of there is to be able to come in with a, you know, zero for a zero cost go again attack then maybe get the opportunity to come in with a zero for four go again attack with a uh you know uh, a zero for three arcane spell and then pitch to waning moon for two more it can provide a lot of damage for sure but unfortunately the deck doesn't block as efficiently as i think it should um and i'm not sure if i still want to try out a volzar plan the problem with a volzar plan is that Volzar does Volzar expects you to keep your whole hand and as you can see chain is a very very tough opponent um, overall and I think that this was one of those like bad matchups in that situation but overall this is just kind of the idea showcasing what the hero can do and how it's played um, I do think that it is effective in what it does but I don't know that it is going to be, you know, even a tier two hero at this rate because you need too many things to be happening with the Cilio for it to be effective. You know, you don't have access to as many sigils and you certainly don't have as much access to lightning cards or uh, any of the wizard cards. A lot of the stuff that does big surges or amps or anything uh, isn't really available in the you know in common there's no disruption outside of arcane damage and arcane damage is easily prevented because everybody at the top tables of a set or a, of a deck you know enigma olympia ira and icelander all have a ton of blues so preventing three damage is easy in a lot of cases for them so that's uh that's kind of the whole thing there but hopefully you guys enjoyed this asilio deck tech for commoner it was a lot of fun trying to build it, and I'm really curious if I'm just missing out on some spice. I'm not a wizard main, so I don't exactly know what I'm looking for, but I think more of this battle mage style of gameplay is very effective simply because 
you're looking to kind of do a mix and match and you know come in with that physical and then come in with some arcane and then maybe even follow it up with a waning moon for some more and i feel like that's at least enough to continue to provide a lot of pressure against your opponent but you guys let me know in the comments i'd love to hear from you i'd love to see your own acilio builds and see if that's something that uh you know is taking over the tables i could be wrong we could see uh an acilio get to top eight in the the commoner battle harden that's happening in portland so very very excited to see the the outcomes of that but again let me know in the comments i'd love to hear from you guys and if you enjoyed watching today's video you can make sure to go ahead and smooch that like button down below there you can also subscribe to the channel if you have not already and if you wish you can even become a channel member channel members do get access to our podcast the common language a week before everybody else does so if you're looking to get your content earlier that is a great way to go ahead and do it. You also get access to loyalty badges and emotes for when I'm live. And also you can even uh, possibly sometime in the future, date pending, uh, enter into our channel member giveaways, which we'll have sometime soon here. So I hope to be able to do that there for you guys, because it really does mean a lot that you guys are supporting me in that means. And I hope to continue to provide wonderful flesh and blood content for you, whether it be in a budget format or it be for classic constructed. I'm always happy to help. So thank you, you wonderful Ashwings, for watching this video on the commoner deck tech for Cilio. And I hope you continue having fun in the flesh and blood. And I'll see all of your beautiful faces in our next video.